All right, guys, it's Saturday. It's time to recap what we've been studying here on Tack Room Devotional. I'm Keith Brown. This week we talked about the right reaction. Again, the right reaction. And it comes from Philippians chapter 4, verse 4 through 9. We, uh, we talked about the fact that every time th there's an action, there's also a reaction. In other words, uh, a trial or tribulation comes up or somebody says something ugly to you or whatever. How do you react to that? And how do we make sure that we know how to act uh, react to certain things. Well, again, let me read our passage. I'm going to read it from the New King James. It goes like this. It says, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious, or don't worry for uh, about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God that uh, surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Finally, my brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, um, uh, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, if there is anything um, praiseworthy, uh, meditate on these things, the things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. Okay, so here Paul is telling us how to react to situations, what we need to do. The first thing we find out in this passage is we need to make sure that we have a right attitude. Well, if you listen to what he said, what did he, he say? He says, rejoice in the Lord always. But then he repeats it again. And again, I say rejoice. And he tells us why we should rejoice. We should rejoice because the Lord is at hand. Amen. Just like we know he could come back at any moment. So we need to have that in the forefront of our thought. The second thing we found out is that we need to have right praying. So in order to have a right reaction, we have to have a right attitude. And now we have to have right praying. What do I mean by that? Well, the Bible tells us that uh, that we can come boldly before the throne of God. Well, how do you come boldly if you don't know um, who you are in that situation? In other words, we need to study and find out who we are in Christ, what he's done for us, and that we have access to the Father. It tells us we can come directly to the Father and ask in Jesus' name, right? And then you'll come in boldness. We also found in 1 uh, John chapter 5, it tells us that we can have confidence that he hears our prayers and he answers those. So again, right praying, that means I come with boldness. I know who I am uh, in him and, and how much he loves me, right? And that he desires to have this relationship with me so I can come and ask. Um, we also said that it's important as we practice this bold boldness and this right praying that we become prayer warriors and not prayer worriers. Because too long we've been praying worried about this and that. We've got to come with boldness. Amen. Well, the next thing we found out was right thinking. So we have right attitude, right praying, now right thinking in order to have right reaction. The right thinking, well, if you look at Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3 and 4, it says, uh, uh, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts you. Okay, listen to that. He, God, will keep us, you and I, in perfect peace if we keep our minds stayed on Him. In other words, we stay focused on Him. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3-5 through 5, tells us that um, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh, but the weapons of our warfare are mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds and uh, casting it out all imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of God taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Paul tells us that. Why? Because we can. We can take our thoughts captive. Amen. And uh, again, I just want to read Philippians 4.8 says, Finally, my brethren, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are, are true, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good report, if there's any virtue, if there's any praise, think or meditate on these things. So that needs to be our right thinking. And then finally that brings us to right living. Right living again comes from verse 9. Those things which you've learned and received and heard and seen in me do and the God of peace will, will be with you. Okay now this is Paul saying hey you've seen it in me but we also have the testimonies of Jesus Christ. 
and we see it in him. We're to put on Christ. We have the mind of Christ. We're the body of Christ. Um, and so that, that we can be like him. We found out in Romans chapter 8, verse 29, it's God's desire to conform us into the image of his son. And so therefore, that's right living, living as Christ lived. Okay, so here's the thing. Again, you want to have right reaction to anything that comes against you? You got to have right attitude, rejoice always. You got to have right praying, pray with boldness. You got to have right thinking, uh, think as Christ thought, meditate on things that are good and pure and holy, and finally, live it. Don't just speak it, live it. Hey, I'm losing my son. Hey, Jesus, I'm not losing the son, praise God, S-O-N, but S-U-N is going down. Hey, we love you. Jesus loves you. We pray that God would richly bless you as you diligently seek him and serve him and go to church tomorrow. See you next week.